Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. Last time we saw the type of power factors and all the basic stuff related to that. Now we'll check the power factor correction methods used in the power supplies. So let's go for a ride. If you see the circuit diagram of a power supply, there's a bridge rectifier at the input, which rectifies the AC input voltage. Then this rectified voltage is provided to the dieseling capacitor, which filters the AC component present in the voltage and provides the DC voltage to the regulator or a DC to DC converter. And this DC to DC converter gives required DC output. We have seen many ways to increase the efficiency of this DC to DC converter to get good and reliable output power. Now it's time to take care of this rectification block. So far we have seen how the voltage behaves and we get the DC output. But if we check the current at the input, it goes like this. The voltage is sinusoidal but the current is full of distortions. And this happens because of this capacitor. This capacitor charges quickly at the peak of the input voltage and discharges slowly. So the current flowing through the circuit is not linear. And there are multiple harmonics present in this current waveform. So because of that, we get the inefficient power factor from the electronic appliance. And this type of power factor is known as harmonic power factor. To know more about the basic concept of power factors, watch my previous video. I have attached the link of that video in the description. Now you can click on this card above. This distortion of the current waveform returns back to the power grid, which reduces the efficiency of the grid and can cost us heavy penalties in the electricity bill. So to avoid such things, there are particular standard rules to limit the harmonic distortions in order to get the good power factor out of a power supply. And these are divided into different classes, which are known as class A, class B, class C, and class D. Here, all the household equipments which consume power more than 600 watts, like audio equipment, cooking appliances, coolers, etc, etc are categorized. All the portable tools which are not professional like arc welding tool come into this category. All the lighting loads like LED lighting at home, street lighting or other lighting loads come into this class. The equipments which consume 600 watts of power and lower than that come into this category. So all the televisions, personal computers, laptop chargers are class D type of loads. Only those loads which consume more than 75 watts of power and run on the current below 15 amperes come in these classes. And there are different type of power factor regulation requirements related to current harmonics for each class. To avoid the loss in the power and improve this power factor, we need to use power factor correction techniques. To get the good power factor, the waveform of the voltage and current should be identical so that we get the maximum power at every instance. This power factor correction technique is divided into two parts. First is the passive power factor correction and second is the active power factor correction. In passive PSC method, the passive components like inductors take care of the power factor. The PFC inductors are connected like this in the power supply line. But there are some disadvantages of this type of power factor correction technique, despite of having small and easy circuit. First, the inductors which are used in this application are so big and heavy. Because the frequency which we are dealing here is in just a few hertz. 
all over the world, the voltage supplied by the grid is not same. For example, in India, it is 230 volts AC with frequency of 50 Hz. And in US or Canada, it is 110 volts with frequency of 60 Hz. So we cannot use the same inductors in both countries. For that, we have to add a switch for universal usage. This switch arrangement will be different if you are using a particular equipment in the US and it will be different for the same equipment if you are using it in the India. Well, if somebody doesn't know how to use it, that guy will end up destroying this power supply. And the power factor correction efficiency of this passive PFC is very poor. So to avoid these disadvantages, we'll jump to the active PFC technique. The popular type of this is the boost PFC. Where the boost DC to DC converter is used between rectifier and the filter capacitor. After the full bridge rectifier, the boost inductor is connected in series. Then an active switch that is MOSFET and a passive switch that is a fast switching diode is used. After the diode, a DC link capacitor is used to filter the ripple present in the voltage. The voltage at the inductor is rectified sinusoidal input. So the average current flowing through this circuit should also be like this. To do so, the MOSFET is switched accordingly by providing the PWM signals with different duty cycles such a way that the current in the circuit follows the same path as that of voltage. So we'll see at the input the current will be full sine wave, just like the voltage. To control the flow of current, we need to add a closed loop feedback system, where the control logic will take the reference of the input voltage and feedback of the current from this path. Because the same current is flowing to the whole circuit, so the input voltage is reference, and by referring to it, the current of the circuit is adjusted. Well, the current can be controlled, but we need to control the output as well. Because the load in our case is DC to DC converter and it will have different input voltage and current requirements. So the output voltage of this PFC boost converter should also be adjustable. So we need to take the feedback of this output voltage as well. This voltage is then compared to the reference voltage which is required at the input stage. So the comparator gives the error output of this feedback and reference. This error signal is provided to the one of the inputs of a multiplier. And this signal is multiplied with the original input voltage reference. These both signals get multiplied and the output of the multiplier goes to the comparator which compares this multiplied reference signals and the current flowing to the circuit. Then this comparator takes the decision to provide the pulse to this MOSFET and by controlling the switching of this MOSFET, it supplies the required voltage to the DC to DC converter and controls the behavior of the circuit current. This process repeats in cycle and this is how the classic power factor correction method works. There are different controlling techniques to do so and this controlling of the current is categorized as continuous conduction mode and critical conduction mode. The topology of all these controlling methods is the same, only the difference is the behavior of current and its controlling strategy. If we check the continuous conduction mode, the current of the inductor doesn't go to zero. It follows the input voltage. The ripple of the inductor current is very low. So the value of this inductor is very high and the design gets bulkier. But this type of control strategy is very helpful for high power applications. 
Now let's check the critical conduction mode. The ripple of the inductor current is very high. The inductor current starts from the zero and current increases up to its maximum value. As soon as it reaches to its maximum value, it falls to zero again. And it keeps repeating throughout the whole process. And this ripple gives the sinusoidal structure. So to achieve this, we have to add SR flip-flop and a zero detector in the controlling logic, which detects the zero crossing of the current and the switching of the MOSFET is controlled by SR flip-flop. So as the MOSFET turns on, the current increases and goes up to higher level and the SR flip-flop resets the driver when it reaches to its peak value. So the current falls down again. The average of this current waveform is sinusoidal. This type of controlling method is very popular because the size of inductor is very low in this technique, but it has very high conduction losses. So this method is not suitable for high power applications. Well, that's it about the power factor correction technique. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.